Happy Friday, everyone. I want to welcome you to today's live. I am super excited about what God has put on my heart to share with you today uh, concerning uh, your eternal spiritual union with him. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself for those of you who may be uh, getting on the live for the first time. This is actually uh, day 38 and uh, actually the 39th day in a row of doing Facebook lives. And uh, I have had such a good time enjoying uh, sharing uh, God's love with you, his word with you, new covenant truth with you. Hi, Nancy. Thanks so much. Nancy from Orange County, California. She has not missed a day of the lives. I so appreciate you, Nancy. I, I hope we get to meet uh, face to face. Uh, you know, before heaven, but if not, at least we'll get to spend eternity together just enjoying each other and enjoying Jesus. And so um, anyway, you bless me. Thanks for getting on the live. So my name is Kim Francis. My author name is Kim K. Francis. And uh, I used to teach high school math. I taught high school math for 13 years before God called me out of public school teaching uh, to start a ministry with my husband called His Heart's Desire Ministries. And our mission, our passion, our purpose is to uh, help believers in Christ um, understand their flawless identity in Him and just learn to rest in Him and to enjoy Him and understand His finished work on the cross on their behalf. And so uh, we love sharing the truth. Uh, hi, Kiki, my sister, my little sister uh, who also lives here in Perryton. She's on the live today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining the live. Um, I, I have to say, um, just thinking about what I am going to share with you today, uh, I just, I just got giddy <laughs> and, um, you know, I just love, um, how the Lord blesses me, uh, with his presence and excitement about truth and just sharing his word and, and just how we can enjoy him more in our daily living and, you know, just a little interesting tidbit here. The word giddy, actually, uh, that the root of that is God. It's, a, you know, enthused with God. And so anyway, that just that was free. <laughs> so uh, I, I, let, I just got such a kick out of that when I learned that giddy actually had as its base God enthused. So anyway. Uh, okay, well, I am going to go ahead and get started with what I believe God wants me to share with you today. And I want to start by asking you a question. Um, how would you rate, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your enjoyment of life? Now, if you answered below 5, what do you think is hindering your enjoyment? And if you answered five or above, uh, what do you enjoy the most about your life? Now, in the midst of all the negative distractions of living on a fallen planet, and, you know, especially now <laughs> with all that's going on, uh, we could all likely use some encouragement uh, to experience more enjoyment during our brief stay on planet Earth. And I say brief stay, you know, when I was younger, I, I, I didn't have a clue that uh, by the time I was 55 years old that uh, it was going to seem like that my life just went by so quickly. And, you know, some seasons go by slower than others. But um, 
you know, the older I get, the more I realize you know, this life that we have on this earth is such a precious gift. And we only have just a little bit of time uh, to make our mark. And I'd like to uh, see it as making my mark by um, allowing Jesus to live through me and love others through me and, and, you know, to share the good news of the gospel of grace in Jesus Christ. Now, before I read today's devotion uh, to you, I am going to read uh, an excerpt from my first book, His Banner Over Me is Pursuing Love. And it is an intimate interactive study of the Song of Solomon chapters one and two. Now, if um, if you've always just heard that the book of the Old Testament book of Song of Solomon is just a literal uh, translation uh, where it illustrates the, the beautiful love in an earthly marriage, that's wonderful. But if that's all you've ever known it to be, a oh man, you are missing out because the Song of Solomon is in its allegorical interpretation or symbolic. That's just a simple word for it. Symbolic interpretation is a gorgeous picture of the eternal spiritual union of Christ and his bride, the church. Every single believer uh, that has ever lived or ever will live is Christ's bride. And so the excerpt that I'm going to share with you today uh, is my all time favorite expert excerpt out of all 300 plus pages of this six week study. Um, and oh, it also has a leader's guide in the back. It's meant to be a group. It, it can be a group study. And so the excerpt that I'm going to share with you, I actually shared at my book launch party uh, that I had back in January of 2018 because I published this in 2017, September of 2017. And I actually, when I first published it, it, it I published it with this cover. Uh, I did it through Westbow Press. And then uh, in 2018, I decided to pull my book from Westbow Press because I knew I was going to write more. I plan to write uh, at least five more books, and right now I'm working on um, I'm working on volume two of His Banner Over Me, but it's going to be called His Banner Over Me: A Sustaining Love, and the overriding theme of it is experiencing God's sustaining love in the midst of suffering. And so um, anyway, I've started on that. I'm enjoying uh, getting back to writing again and just sensing, uh, you know, Christ doing that through me. And let me look at the uh, comment here. Um, hi, Raja. Thanks so much for getting on the live. Uh, you're you you've been a faithful attender too. Thank you. And so, okay, I am going to read um, my favorite excerpt from my first book, "His Banner Over Me Is Pursuing Love," and it is from week five, day one. The maiden is now experiencing great delight because of understanding the extraordinary night and day difference between living under the law from do, 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 and living under grace to be, be, be. She is enjoying the exhilarating pleasure of resting in her beloved's presence. Life in Christ is good. Jesus wants us to enjoy life. His word tells us that he richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. That's from 1 Timothy 6, 17. He wants us to realize that he is our life and the source of our greatest enjoyment. The Westminster Shorter Catechism states that man's chief purpose in life is to glorify God 
and enjoy him forever. We enjoy and glorify our beloved when we experience and express his cherishing love and exuberant life. As the bride of Christ, we need to learn how to master the art of taking great delight in him. Just as Julia Child mastered the art of French cooking, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could master the art of enjoying Jesus? I want to experience and enjoy him as much as possible this side of eternity. I want joy to be the marrow that courses through my veins. I want to come to the end of my life on this earth, if Jesus tarries, and be able to say that I truly lived because I intimately knew life himself. I want my first gaze into my beloved's eyes to be familiar not foreign. In my attempt to communicate with the bride of Christ how knowing her identity will enable her to experience and express his cherishing love and exuberant life, I'm reminded of a quote by theologian Dr. Howard Hendricks. A mist in the pulpit is a fog in the pews. If we don't understand and practice what we preach, how can we effectively teach others? No one wants to read a book on how to bake the perfect cherry pie unless he or she knows the author makes delicious cherry pies. Likewise, no one wants to read a book or listen to a message about how to enjoy Jesus unless the author or speaker consistently shows forth the fruit of delighting in him. For over 10 years now, I have been on a journey of learning to rest in the shade of my beloved's grace and delighting in him as I allow myself to experience his unconditional love. While I cannot claim that I have mastered the art of enjoying him, I will say that I am in hot pursuit. The most important thing that I've learned is something I've said before in different ways, and I will keep saying, the key to delighting in Jesus is to personally experience his delight in you. He delights in you and celebrates you at all times simply because you are his. Our beloved is a master at separating our who from our do. He is filled com with compassion for us in our struggles. He's not holding a hammer ready to nail us if we don't get our act together. We can rest entirely in him, in his love, power, goodness and wisdom. Hi, Kathy. She says, sorry, I had to miss yesterday. So I got the replay. God bless you as I have been blessed. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. Hey, I understand. Uh, I know that uh, it, it would be hard to catch every single live. In fact, I'm super amazed that um, it has worked out where I have been able to do this um, 39 days without interruption. That's amazing, but much more simple uh, during the time that we're living in right now when uh, we're just not going anywhere or doing anything. But thank you so much. Um, I, I think you said you were from from Paraguay, right? If I'm remembering correctly, but thank you so much for joining us. Now, just in case you didn't know, um, my devotional, 50 Days in His Pursuing Love devotional, is a spinoff of the study that I just read the excerpt from. And um, I, I like to describe this devotional as Jesus Calling meets the naked gospel. 
And it's because it's written in the style of Jesus calling, just as if Jesus is speaking directly to you. But it is jam packed with undiluted, unpolluted gospel truth. The God, there is no law. There is no no legalism whatsoever in either one of my books that I'm aware of. Um, if, if it's in there, it got it. It's snuck in there by mistake. So um, anyway, uh, today's devotion that I'm going to read to you from uh, day 38 is called. Um, he wants you to enjoy life. Now, this devotion was inspired by the excerpt uh, that I just read to you from my six-week Bible study. Okay, Kathy says, yes, she's from Paraguay. It, it's an honor to have you join us. Thank you. And so day 38 is titled, He Wants You to Enjoy Life. So if you'll put yourself in receiving mode uh, while I read this, um, you know, you might even want to close your eyes to get more out of it so you're not distracted by me. But anyway, okay, my beautiful bride, I want you to enjoy life. I mean, really enjoy it. I have richly supplied you with all things to enjoy. What's more, I want you to realize that I am your life and the source of your greatest enjoyment. You will delight in me to the degree that you see by faith my utter delight in you. My delight in you is not based on what you do or don't do. It will never change no matter what. I delight in and celebrate you at all times simply because you are mine. You are the object of my extravagant affection, the regal recipient of my lavishing love, grace, and mercy. You take my breath away. I am always available to you, but it, it is your choice whether or not you will allow yourself to find your greatest satisfaction in me. In a world that continues to search for happiness and meaning apart from me, a heart fully satisfied in me brings me great glory. In the time you have left on this earth, learn how to master the art of taking great delight in me by practicing my presence. This simply means that you acknowledge me, that you acknowledge that I am always in you and for you and rejoicing over you. It means that you are giving me the precious gift of your attention in a world filled with distractions. And when your time on earth comes to an end, you will be able to say that you truly enjoyed life because you intimately savored me. Mm, I love that. I love that. I loved sensing him writing that through me. Um, now, what I want to focus on is what I shared from both excerpts is that you will delight in Jesus to the in the same degree that you see his utter delight in you. Well, how do you see this? Through eyes of faith, through believing what his word says about how much he loves you, and through personalizing his love for you. Kiki says, well, now he is continually wooing you with his special love for your heart alone. <laughs> no one else has the relationship that you have with Jesus. And, you know, some of the ways that he woos me, 
uh, is I'm just going to share with you some of the ways, just the practical ways that he he gets my attention, showing me that he is wooing me continually. Uh, one of the ways is when I um, am in a, a store and, you know, a lot of times stores have music pumped through their sound system and um the last time this happened i was at our local uh supermarket in the pasta aisle and and the song that was playing through the sound system was that let my love open the door you know that song i love that song that's such a catchy tune but as soon as i heard that i had to grin a mile wide because i knew that that was Jesus loving on me. You know, music is always being pumped through the sound system in, at United, but I don't always notice it. And it's him, it's him in me uh, that, you know, just says, hey, pay attention to this. I'm loving on you through this. And so, you know, he did that one Wednesday. And then the very next Wednesday, that's grocery shopping day, he did the very same, same thing with the very same song. I don't think I was in the pasta aisle uh, the second week. But anyway, he that song came on again. And I just had to say, yeah, I, I got it, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for wooing me. You know, and he also woos me through scenes and lines in movies. And he woos me through sunrises and sunsets and star-filled night skies. Now, and, and every time I see the, you know, his beautiful creation, I always think that he painted that just for me to see at that moment in time. And, you know, right now uh, I've been going for walks in our neighborhood um, and just, he is wooing me through the beautiful, fragrant blooms of the May flowers. And, um, you know, when I see them many times, I'll see his nail scarred hand holding them saying, Kim, I created these for your pleasure. And so it, and this may sound silly to you, but just this past week, I found a tiny, tiny metallic heart-shaped star. And the minute I picked it up and looked at it, I heard the Lord in, in my heart say, you are my shining star. <laughs> and, you know, and a lot of times he'll point out heart shapes to me. And anytime I see a heart shape, or most of the time I see a heart shape, I hear him say, you have captured my heart, my treasure, my bride. Now that's from the Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 9. And the New Living Translation says, You have captured my heart, my treasure, my bride. You hold it hostage with one glance of your eyes. Now, beloved, you have captured his heart forever and always. When you said yes to his proposal of eternal spiritual marriage, when you heard the gospel and believed into Jesus, you may not have realized it, but that was his proposal of eternal spiritual union, his marriage proposal to you. And so, and now that you, when you said yes and you believed into him, you belong to him forever now. You are his flawless, his pure, holy, and righteous bride. And so, oh, hi, Deborah. Thank you so much. Another one of my good friends uh, here, here in, in Perryton, Texas. Thank you so much for joining the live. Uh, you know, I have had such a good time just sharing you with you this message today about how Jesus wants you to enjoy your life. And I, I hope it's encouraged you.
Uh, Nancy says, I understand that this is true, but I have a hard time feeling special like that for some reason. Um, thank you for sharing that with me, Nancy. And I'm sure that you are not the only believer that feels this way. I know you're not. I've heard other people other people ha that have gone through this study, through my study with me, um, they've they've told me that they struggle with that. And, you know, um, I, I just this just came up in my spirit. So I'm going to share it. Um, one of the things that helped me more than anything in seeing, you know, I said we will uh, take great delight in Jesus in the degree that we see him taking great delight in us. And you know how um, pictures and and movies and TV shows, you know how they can move our emotions like nothing else, uh, whether, you know, it's just a compilation of all that's going on, plus the, the beautiful music uh, that they use. Um, it was through Jesus uh, giving me pictures, motion pictures. In my mind's eye, I could see him and I dancing together and he, he just embracing me, just loving on me. And uh, that is one of the ways that he uses uh, to really touch my emotions. You know, pictures and moving pictures uh move our emotions like no other and you know i just i just ask him i ask him on a regular basis to reveal his love for me through pictures and um, you know through any way that he wants to but thank you so much um for uh your transparency because um uh, i know you're not the only one that struggles with that and another thing uh as you grow in your understanding of your one and only flawless identity in Christ, um, I believe that he will enable you uh, to feel what he feels for you. Um, and, you know, honestly, I don't think he lets any of us completely feel what he feels for us because I don't think our mortal bodies would be able to handle it um his love is fierce it's fierce in a good way he you know he loved us so much he couldn't stand the thought of living without us so he he suffered a horrifying uh death on a cross just so we could uh be with him forever that was we were on his mind when he went to the cross and so his love is just overwhelming and amazing. And Nancy, I will be praying for you uh, that the Lord will reveal his special love just for your heart alone in, in very practical ways. And uh, and one thing, um, don't, you know, don't don't let the fact that you your experience isn't like mine or anyone else's. Don't let that interfere with the intimacy that you can enjoy with him through his word and through books and uh, through whichever way he wants you to experience his love. But um, anyway, thank you so much for uh, sharing that. And so I'm just looking over here at the comments and wow, this has gone longer than normal. But um, anyway, um, I, tomorrow in tomorrow's live, May 9, day 39. Uh, and the title of day 39 is All Your Sins Are Gone Forever. <laughs> And so that's good news. And I'm going to elaborate on that in tomorrow's live. And until then, I just want to remind you that you're happily forever after in Christ. It's already started. So enjoy him today because he it, he so enjoys you. Uh, your your yes 
<laughs> your yes to him when you believed into Jesus that was the one glance toward him that stole his heart forever so enjoy him today and I will see you tomorrow at noon. Bye for now.